So you are searching for a very cheap electric scooter that can do 45 km per hour, can do a range around 40 km, 13 amps with 48 volts. I have here the Bugist C1 Pro. Is it good? Is it bad? If you want to know everything about it, stay tuned until the end of the video. <laughs> Hi everyone, Marcus here from Medpack and if you love EUCs, PVs and everything that have an E of electricity, this is the place for you. And today we are going to do the unboxing of the Bogis C1 Pro. Yes, the unboxing, because when I reached this point I was a bit confused because the scooter doesn't look like the one that I was expecting. And looking to the specs, 13 amps, 45 km per hour, 48 volts, it doesn't look right for the price that it was announced to me before they sent me the scooter. So this one is a 700 pound scooter and in the end we'll talk a little bit more about this beast. And this is not the full review because obviously I'll be doing that soon when I have the opportunity to test it out and see how is the performance of this one when you are outside. This was something that I was not expecting. Whoa! Something that I was not expecting is that this one comes with a seat. Oh, seems comfortable. And just have a look. Okie dokie. So very, very simple system. You have something in here to press and you close and you open. It's much, much bigger and much, much heavier than the ET Wow GT also. Something to consider about. Okay, okay, you have the button there to open and it seems quite easy to open and close. But you have here on the side, you have something to lock in place. I'm not sure if it works or not to open and close. So let's talk about this scooter. And I have to say to you guys, like for $300, it doesn't look bad at all. I don't really like the, the seat because it doesn't make a lot of sense for me. And you have suspensions on the back, on the front, and it seems also on the seat. And when you are sitting, so it goes down also in the seat. So if you want a cheap option, you will have it with it. I don't really understand how you can turn off and turn on the, the front light. It doesn't seem to have a button. Even if you press, just after that you kick in, it will start accelerating. You have the backlight, and this backlight doesn't react even if you try to brake. So just to point it out, but it seems that it's going to be a comfortable scooter because you have suspensions on the front and the back. But here you can see when you go a little bit more budget compared, for example, for an ETUL GT, the amount of screws that you have. So you have yes, so, One, two, three, four, so yeah, 25 yeah. screws. So in total, you have like 50 screws to be always checking around. Also the brakes, I just see a disc brake on the back. Even if you press, it doesn't do anything. This button feels really, really cheap. This was the worst part on the ET Wow, but this next to the ET Wow is, is just a joke. The deck, it seems quite wide. I like the design and it's grippy. It seems grippy. Let's see how long it will last. Let's take out this seat and see how wide and how comfortable I can feel with my feet on this scooter. Another thing that I just want to point it out is this is not a scooter that you want to fold and lift it up a lot of times because it's a heavy scooter. Just have that in mind and looking to the screen, I really like the position of the screen. It's very, very easy to understand the speed, the amount of kilometers that you are going, the amount of battery that you have on your scooter and the modes. So you can ride in eco mode, you have the mid mode and you have the high mode. I'll check it out, how is the experience of all these modes. I want also to understand how is the brakes, if they are too, too strong or not. Before I just give you my final thoughts about this, just obviously looking to the unboxing, looking to the charger, you have here a 1.5 amps. Something that we just talked previously on the ETL GT is really rare to find a good charger on this type of range. 1.5 amps mm, when we look to the ETL GT is a 3 amps charger so just to give you an idea it comes also with the support for your phone so if you need to put it in there and see where you are going definitely cool and it comes with this toolkit I don't know what is inside because I didn't open until now and you have here some tools obviously to to tight everything and obviously in this kind of range price definitely double check everything that you have. If you can really reach 45 km per hour for this kind of price. So you have quite a bit of flexibility and you have the seat. Something that I will never use but it's just to point it out. When you are riding or when you'll be riding with this one you definitely need your feet quite on the back. 
on top of the mud guard. The mud guard is massive, something that in many scooters you don't have. You don't have any buzz to let everyone know that you are coming. So definitely something that I would like to have seen different. You don't have a button to turn on and turn off the front light. And that can be a problem when you are on public transports because for example if you go to the train they will ask you to turn off this light looking to the build quality the mudguard is is quite good the suspensions they they looks all right obviously we need to check it out in the long run if it's good or if it's not the stand is quite easy to just adjust with your feet and open the tires they are massive so we are talking about 10 inch tires obviously you can feel them so they are not uh, airless tires so it should be much more comfortable than the ETWAL GT that is really really impressive anyway how comfortable it is when we was talking about this locking mechanism that I was saying that I was not really convinced is quite easy when you know that you need to force a bit more but it feels cheap okay so it's just to point it out it feels cheap but it works okay so now it's locked and it doesn't go anywhere another thing that I like is the fact that the cables they are wrapped around in a very very good way your handbar is quite straight and is not really wide so just to point it out and another thing that you can do is obviously you can adjust it up and down if you have a kid that is going to ride it's quite easy and it's quite strong what is the negative for me in this range price and looking to this one is once again the same thing is some 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 materials they are quite cheap like this control to, to to accelerate it feels really 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 cheap okay but overall the thing that annoys me the most is the amount of screws that you have on this price range if i look to the etwl gt you don't have almost any screws and that was something that I really really like 45 kilometers per hour 13 amps 40 kilometers if all these specs are right it's not bad at all my name is Marco this is Matt Peck if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to the channel comment below smash the thumbs up do whatever you want but always with a smile on your face and I hope to see you in the next one